From north to south, east to west, we're going to explore the art. The art full of wonders and mysteries. Welcome to Finding Art. Lyme disease. Heldy is happy, but there are so many diseases around us. Today, we will get to know about Lyme disease. Lyme disease, also known as Lyme Borreliosis, is an infectious disease caused by bacteria of the Borrelia type. The most common sign of infection is an expanding area of redness, known as erythema migrans. It begins at the site of a tick bite about a week after it has occurred. The rash is typically neither itchy nor painful. Lyme disease is transmitted to humans by the bite of infected ticks of the Ixodes genus. Usually, the tick must be attached for 36 to 48 hours before the bacteria can spread. Let's get to know about the symptoms of Lyme disease. The symptoms differ at different stages. Lyme disease occurs in three stages, early localized, early disseminated, and late disseminated. The symptoms you experience will depend on which stage the disease is in. Stage 1. Early localized disease. Rash. From 3 to 30 days after an infected tick bite, an expanding red area might appear that sometimes clears in the center, forming a bullseye pattern. The rash erythema migrans expands slowly over days and can spread to 12 inches across. It is typically not itchy nor painful. This rash erythema migrans will disappear after 4 weeks. Stage 2 Early Disseminated Lyme Disease Early disseminated Lyme disease occurs several weeks after the tick bite. Bacteria are beginning to spread throughout the body. This stage is characterized by flu-like symptoms such as chills, fever, enlarged lymph nodes, sore throat, vision changes, fatigue, muscle aches, headaches. Stage 3 Late Disseminated Lyme Disease Late Disseminated Lyme Disease occurs when the infection hasn't been treated in stages 1 and 2. Stage 3 can occur weeks, months, or years after the tick bite. This stage is characterized by severe headaches. Bouts of severe joint pain and swelling are especially likely to affect your knees, but the pain can shift to other joints. Heart problems such as an irregular heartbeat, brain disorders, encephalopathy involving memory, mood, and sleep. Short-term memory loss, difficulty concentrating, mental fogginess, problems following conversation, numbness in the arms, legs, hands or feet, eye inflammation, liver inflammation, severe fatigue, nausea and vomiting, neurological problems, weeks, months or even years after infection, you might develop meningitis, temporary paralysis of one side of your face, numbness or weakness in your limbs and impaired muscle movement. Contact your doctor immediately if you have any of these symptoms. Risk factors for Lyme disease include to spend time in wooden or grassy place. In the United States, deer ticks are most prevalent in Northeast and Midwest regions, which have heavily wooden areas where deer ticks thrive. Children who spend a lot of time outdoors in these regions are especially at risk. Adults with outdoor occupations also are at increased risk. Exposed skin. Ticks attach easily to bare flesh. Protect yourself and your children by wearing long sleeves and long pants. If you're in an area where ticks are common, don't expose your body in these places. Ticks attached to your skin. Bacteria from a tick bite can enter your bloodstream if the tick stays attached to your skin for 36 to 48 hours or longer. If you remove a tick within two days, your risk of acquiring Lyme disease is low. Let's get to know how Lyme disease can be prevented. Lyme prevention mostly involves decreasing the risk of tick bites. Take the following steps to stay safe. Cover up. When in wooded or grassy areas, wear shoes, long pants tucked into your socks, a long-sleeved shirt, a hat, and gloves. Try to stick to trails and avoid walking through low bushes and long grass. Keep your dog on a leash. Use insect repellent. Apply insect repellent with a 20% or higher concentration of DEET to your skin. Parents should apply repellent to their children properly. Keep in mind that chemical repellents can be toxic, so follow directions carefully. Apply products with permethrin to clothing or by pre-treated clothing. Clean your ear. Clear bush and leaves where ticks leave. Keep wood piles in sunny areas. Check for ticks. Be watchful, check your children, pets and yourself for ticks. You're not safe, people can get Lyme disease more than once. 
Take shower. It's helpful to shower as soon as you come indoors. Ticks often remain on your skin for hours before attaching themselves. Showering and using a washcloth might remove unattached ticks. Remove a tick quickly. Gently grasp the tick near its head or mouth with a tweezer. Don't squeeze or crush the tick, but pull carefully and steadily. Once you've removed the entire tick, dispose of it and apply antiseptic to the bite area. Now, let's learn how Lyme disease is diagnosed. Blood test is most reliable a few weeks after the initial infection. When antibodies are present, the following tests are required. Number 1. ELISA Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay is used to detect antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi. Number 2. Western blot can be used to confirm a positive ELISA. It checks for the presence of antibodies to specific Borrelia burgdorferi proteins. Number 3. Polymerase chain reaction PCR is used to evaluate people with persistent Lyme arthritis or nervous system symptoms. It is performed on joint fluid or spinal fluid. Treatments and drugs. Antibiotics are used to treat Lyme disease. In general, recovery will be quicker and more complete the sooner treatment begins. Oral antibiotics. These are the standard treatment for early stage Lyme disease. These usually include doxycycline for adults and children older than 8, amoxicillin or cefiroxime for adults, younger children, and pregnant or breastfeeding women. A 14 to 21 day course of antibiotics is usually recommended, but some studies suggest that courses lasting 10 to 14 days are equally effective. Intravenous antibiotics. If the disease involves the central nervous system, your doctor might recommend treatment with an intravenous antibiotic for 14 to 28 days. This is effective in eliminating infection, although it may take you some time to recover from your symptoms. Intravenous antibiotics can cause various side effects, including a lower white blood cell count, mild to severe diarrhea or colonization, or infection with other antibiotic-resistant organisms unrelated to Lyme. After treatment, a small number of people still have some symptoms, such as muscle aches and fatigue. The cause of these continuing symptoms, known as post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, is unknown, and treating with more antibiotics doesn't help. Some experts believe that certain people who get Lyme disease are predisposed to develop an autoimmune response that contributes to their symptoms. More research is needed. Bismacine. The Food and Drug Administration warns against the use of bismacine, an injectable compound prescribed by some alternative medicine practitioners to treat Lyme disease. Bismacine, also called chromacine, contains high levels of the metal bismuth. Although bismuth is safely used in some oral medication for stomach ulcers, it's not approved for use in injectable form or as a treatment for Lyme disease. Bismacine can cause bismuth poisoning, which may lead to heart and kidney failure. Thanks for watching. This is your host, Tracy Gomez. Please subscribe. See you in my next video.